The first animal of my audio field guide to New Providence shall be the robin. The robin is easily uh, identified by its red belly and gray or black body. And although this is a bit more rare than having a red belly, the uh, robin can also have a uh, red face. Now this, this this comes with many variations. Its belly and face can be red. Its face can be red, and all everything else can be gray or black. But it's it's a little bit more rare than red belly. Uh, you you can you very easily find robins in suburban areas. Very easily find them in many places like pastures or gardens, parks, yards, golf courses, fields. Um, surprisingly enough, though, they do live in the tundra. You can also easily find robins in this deciduous forest of the world. Um, now for some facts about the robin. Well, these have already been facts, but, you know, kind of like scientific stuff. So, uh, the lifespan of the robin is usually around two years, although there have been, there has been a robin recorded to be 11 years old. The mortality rate of the robin is 75%. Its weight is usually about 2.7 to 3 ounces. The incubation period of the robin, like how long they're in an egg, is usually 12 to 14 days if they hatch. The length of, length of the average robin, actually length of the robin, not the average robin, my mistake, is 7.9 to 11 inches. The uh, diet of the robin is made up of insects, earthworms, and snails. And the mother robin will regurgitate her partially digested food into the mouths of her young. Because the babies can't really chew anything and they need their mother's help to eat. And, well, during winter you can commonly find flocks of ro robins gathering together to roost or eat berries. And on a final note, I would just like to show you this picture I drew of a robin eating a worm. Which I find kind of cool. Don't judge me. My next organism shall be the dandelion plant. The dandelion has a yellow bud with like many, many petals, as you can see in this picture. And it may it looks beautiful, they're very pretty, but they're actually weeds. It's very surprising. Many people don't know this. And uh but as the dandelion matures, its bud changes. Uh as shown in the picture on the screen right now. Uh, when the dandelion as the dandelion matures, the uh, the yellow petals are replaced by uh, white parachute-like structures that are attached to the seeds. So when the seeds are released from the flower, the uh, seeds are carried near and far, feet to miles, and this is why the dandelions grow so much because they have so many seeds going to so many different places. They grow at such a rapid rate, which is why they're such a nuisance. And uh, dandelions have a very short lifespan of three months, in which they complete their entire life cycle. And I, I found out that they have a very small width. Their width is 0.2 to 0.3 centimeters. And that'll be it for dandelions. My next organism shall be the gray squirrel. The gray squirrel is a small rodent that is gray with some tinges of brown and white. Although during the summer its fur is yellowish brownish. You can mainly find the gray squirrel during dusk when it searches for its food. Its diet consists of acorns, nuts, bird seed, tree bark, fungi, fungi, birds eggs, hazelnuts, leaves, flower buds, and sometimes it'll even eat baby birds. Including the length of its tail, the gray squirrel is 45 to 55 centimeters long. And it, and it weighs about 350 to 600 grams. The lifespan of the gray squirrel is different for its males and females. The females live from 4 to 6 years, while the males only live from 2 to 3 years. Although some gray squirrels live to be 10 years old. Now the breeding seasons of the gray squirrel are December through January and May through July. The mortality rate of the gray squirrel is 75%. The gray squirrel has very good eyesight and is very agile. Uh, the gray squirrel can actually leap up to uh, 18 feet, which is pretty far for such a small animal. That'll be all for the gray squirrel, and I shall now move on to my next organism, the oak tree. Here is a picture of the oak tree. 
The oak tree, the average oak tree, usually stands at about 100 feet. Although the one in my neighbor's backyard, I estimate to be about 75 feet high. The width of the average oak tree is 9.5 feet. While the height and the width of the oak tree are measurable, its weight is not. It varies so much that it's impossible to get a good estimation, although they weigh several tons. Now you may notice that there are no leaves on this oak tree. That's because I took this picture in late winter. However, this picture I took in early spring, with many leaves on it. Now, as you may know, the oak tree is not a conifer plant, so it starts to lose its star-like leaves in the fall. But now that it's spring, it looks all nice and pretty. And the lifespan of the oak tree is 200 to 400 years, and during the spring, it bears acorns, which is a kind of seed. And as I mentioned earlier, acorns are the, are the like this like the center pillar of the squirrel's diet. And the diet of the tree, like most other plants, is water and sunlight. And that wraps it up for the oak tree. My next animal shall be the white-tailed deer. The white-tailed deer has brown fur, hooves and the males have antlers. When, when the white-tailed deer is a baby, it has many white spots. The white-tailed deer gets its name from what is probably its most, its most import, important feature, its tail. You see, when the white-tailed deer detects a threat, it raises its tail, exposing, the white under, exposing its white underside. When the, member of its, when the members of, it, of its pack sees, the, sees this white underside, they realize something is wrong, and they raise their tail, alerting more members of the pack. This effectively alerts the entire pack of danger and will leave them ready to run at any moment. The male deer is known as a buck, and the female deer is known as a doe. The weight of the buck and doe is a little bit different. The weight of the buck, is, the average weight of the buck, is 300 pounds, while the average weight of the doe is only 125 pounds. The height of the white-tailed deer is usually about 3.5 feet high. Now, the lifespan of the white-tailed deer is a little bit complicated because it is greatly affected by hunting and captivity. Now, the average lifespan of the white-tailed deer is 5 years. Although, in an area with no hunting, like a wildlife reserve, the white-tailed deer has been recorded to live to be 11 years old. And in captivity, they, they usually grow to be 20 years old. Speaking of life, the mortality rate of the white-tailed deer is 37%, and its breeding season is late October through December. The white-tailed deer is a herbivore, so and it eats over a, and it eats about 614 different plants, including crops, leaves, twigs, fungi, herbs, fruit, and much, much more. You can find the white-tailed deer in many different places in the world, such as U the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Central America, Northern South America, and usually you can usually you can find them in dense deciduous forests. And that will be it for the white-tailed deer. And I shall now move on to my next organism, the bird's foot of violet. My next and final organism shall be the bird's foot violet. The bird's foot violet is a common flower in New Jersey that originated in eastern North America. They can be up to 10 inches tall and are usually bluish, but the bud can be anywhere from white to purple. The bird's foot violet has five petals and its leaves can be up to 2 inches long. You can find the bird's foot violet growing in sandy or rocky roadsides, open woods, or in dry fields. The bird's foot violet starts to bloom in March, and then its blooming ends in June when it reproduces. And that will be all for the bird's foot violet. Thank you for watching the field guide to new Pro David Adams field guide to new Providence, and I hope you learned something useful. And I would also like to congr congratulate the viewer or viewers for actually making it through this entire video. Thank you, and good night.